my friends. Today we're back with another video on how to make your race car better and to make it more efficient. Uh, today I'm going to be unboxing and giving a demonstration on how to use a Joe's bump steer gauge. Uh, I just purchased this new bump steer gauge. I've used another one, um, but it was time for a new one, so I thought I would make a video out of it. Bump steers are a really important part of the front of your race car. You have uh, a double A-arm car there's a lot of things in there moving and they've got to be aligned correctly to make it more, the most efficient you can make it. Um, we're going to go through a couple of steps on how to go through and, and get some of these things a little bit more correct, um, how they work, why, they, why they're important, and ultimately just a real quick how-to um, using my new tool here. And um, yeah, hopefully we can see some benefits. So real quick before we go too far, I'm going to show you this little video that I made. Um, it's uh, it's a little bit of a primitive drawing, but uh, you know it's going to serve the purpose that we need it to. So check this out. So here's your lower A arm. Up here is your upper A arm, and both of these work on this large radius because they they pivot around their their chassis mount. Same with this lower ball joint. It's got a large radius that it pivots around its chassis mount. The, the tie rod does the same thing when it pivots around its rack mount. It's got a large radius, and when you're lower in your, in your adjustment, it wants to pull in and it tows itself in through travel because the suspension is always traveling up. We always measure it up. If it's higher in its mount, it tows itself out as it travels up. And you can kind of see that on this. This is kind of like a rough design, rough idea of on how the radiuses work. So when it's straight, it's at its longest point. As that travels up in this radius, it narrows itself up this far, correct? Well, just same as if it travels down, it narrows itself up this far. That is all like steering input. It's just, it, it works as tow. Um, so when you're, when you're in this position, and say like your lower a arm and your upper a arm that looks like kind of a standard uh you know angle that they would have if your tie rod was to run downhill to that um you know say run downhill two or three degrees as it traveled up it would effectively lengthen itself it wouldn't change its actual length but it's going to act longer because of its radius and it's going to push the front of that tire out and it's going to show bump out same thing as if uh, it, you know your your say your your a arms are both flat and your tie rod goes uphill to your spindle um, as it travels up it's effectively going to look like it's shorter and it's going to bump the car in this is one reason why caster is so important on bump steer if you get your bump steer all correct and then you change your caster and by leaning the, the top ball joint back, it raises the steer arm. Now you've got more angle in, in your tie rod and it changes your bump steer. So as I said in previous videos, everything works on top of itself. Uh, it's, it's just an evolution of your chassis. You adjust something, you go back, you readjust somewhere else, you adjust that point, you go back and readjust somewhere else, and everything's constantly moving. The, the, the goal is to get everything to where you want it at the same time and through travel because there's so much travel in the front of these cars to get it to operate correctly and not kick yourself way out on on your toe or you know several other things all right there we have it that is the bump steer gauge um, this is the main unit here, and then it's got these two adjustable legs. The nice part about this design, Joe's design of bump steer gauge, is that all it has is these two legs and these two feet. It doesn't have a lower crossbar. Uh, it's just a really simple unit to use. You can get your jack in through the side. You can, you know, use your regular, uh, you know, floor jack to raise and lower your spindle so that you can measure everything. They provide this really nice plate that not only has a five bolt pattern for five on five, five on four and three quarter, um, five on four and a half even. It also has the two center bolts for a bolt cap, a bolt on cap wide five, or even you can use these on the wide five lugs uh, so that you can use it uh, in place of the, uh, the snap cap uh, front hub. It's got a nice little level on it and it's got plenty of room for travel so that you can measure it. So basically you just attach this to your hub, um, you get it leveled, you put, your uh, your bump gauge up to it and then you can travel the suspension and measure it with this beautiful nice little digital um, indicator that it's got 
anything that you get from Joe's Racing Products is literally top of the line um, uh, race car stuff. They've got a great group of designers, machinists. Um, they're just the industry leader in in new uh, up to date stuff. Um, I've I use a ton of Joe's stuff. In fact. I prefer to buy stuff from Joe's rather than anybody else. One, he's a local racer. Um, he's from Washington State, where I'm from. I've known Joe for a long time. But more importantly, Joe has the best stuff. He, he's he been building stuff for other companies for a long time. Um, he started his own deal, and he just builds a beautiful product. Well, let's put it to work. Basically what happens is when a car is traveling up you got both uh, the upper and lower a arms plus the steer arm And if it's not set up correctly, it'll change the toe which changes the way the car feels So just real quick to kind of show this is a car that was brought to me and it is really messed up uh, So we'll watch it as it goes up You can already see that negative number that means it's towing itself in there at one inch It's at uh, 60 thousands, which is just over a sixteenth they were at two inches and were a hundred thousands. As you can see, at four inches of travel at the wheel, we are over two hundred thousandths towed in. That is a massive number. That is nearly a quarter inch. It's over three sixteenths and it's easing in on a quarter inch. So to adjust this, this is a slotted end rack. This is a sweet rack. And this slot right here, we can adjust uh, the tie rod up and down. Going down toes the tire in more through travel. Going up with it toes the tire out more through travel. So being 200 thousandths out, I know this thing's going to have to go up a pretty good ways uh, to get it right. So I'm going to make an adjustment real quick. I'll show you a picture of where I went to and then we'll rerun it. All right, now you can see how far I adjusted it um, up into that slot. All this takes on these particular racks is a 5 8 on the back, 11 16 on the front side. You loosen them up, you slide them up, and then you tighten it back down. On an older style rack where that is a flat laying heim, you have to add shims to it. And I'll show you that next. I have another car I'm going to do bump on later uh, today, and we'll show you that one. But for now, we just loosen that up, slide it up. Basically, we need to raise this pivot point uh, to get the car to tow out more through travel. We'll just re-zero that. Got it back on zero, and let's see how our changes affect it. Well, I can already tell you it's a lot better. So now it looks like since we're going to a positive number, we may have actually gone too far up. But we had so far to go that I felt like, you know, I'll take a big swing at it and see what we come up with. Um, there we are, 30 thousandths out. Obviously, um, I can get some of that back, so I'm going to go make another adjustment. I'm going to pull that down a little bit. Okay, so made my little adjustment. I'm back to zero. Let's see how it goes. So time, sometimes these things do swing uh, towed in and then they swing back towed out. So right there you can see we're towed in 13, 15. It should start coming back out here pretty quick. 14, 12, look at that. Comes right back. So at four inches we are back to zero we're actually heading back out there's not a lot we can do about that that's about as good as you're going to get it um you got to kind of swing through that middle right there we're at uh seven thousandths of an inch which is about the thickness of two human hairs uh, i don't think the driver is going to feel that the left front turned out about three thousandths which is about the thickness of one human hair i am actually really happy with that um and that's how you set the bump here you can see where we wound up right about in the middle of our adjustment range um we have room to go up or down we don't need it but uh that's how easy it is slide that thing up slide it down get it where you want it tighten it down call our day okay so here we are on the right front of the second car and as we go up you can see it goes to a negative number pretty quickly um going to a negative number on this means that this point is extending when it goes to a positive number, that means this point is pushing in, which would be toe out on the right front, 
versus a negative number shows toe in on the right front. Now on your left front, because you know it, I, I'd leave it set up the same and I read the back of the left front and the front of the right front, you can easily switch this over so you read the back on both sides, the front on both sides, whatever works for you. Uh, I don't waste that time, I just know the difference between the two and I just kind of play the game. Um, on this one, you can see this one's got a flat rack, so the heim joint, the inner heim joint, lays horizontally as opposed to vertically. This one is a lot more of a pain in the ass to adjust. You gotta pull that bolt out, change the shim in it, tighten it back down, recheck it, as opposed to just sliding it up and down. Um, all the new cars have the, the slot. This is an older car that we're trying to tune up a little bit. Um, it, it is kind of a pain in the butt. That is on the list of updates for it, but for now we're just gonna make do. Now that I got my bolt loose, I'm going to go ahead and add the shim right in here between the taper spacer and the rod end. Alright, we're back to zero. Let's go ahead and run it. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, it does go out and then come back in like they normally do. That That is a factor. As long as you can get it within, you know, my number is 15 thousandths. As long as I can be 15 thousandths at full travel, and ideally my travel is going to be right around there. Um, I'm 13, but like I say, it, it, it does swing both directions. So I'm happy with that. Uh, it doesn't take a lot, but it's a big, big difference having it correct. This car, when I started on it, was over three-eighths of an inch off um, between both uh, up and down swings uh, on both sides. If you add the two numbers together, it was a, it was a pretty substantial uh, uh, issue. On a stock clipped type car, like a hobby stock, street stock, or even some of these uh, you know late models that had stock clips on them, it's a little bit harder to set the bump. Um, some of these have adjustable center links like this one. It's got a slug in it You can lower this point you can raise this point and they're also adjustable uh, in this area here where the where the ball is um, You can take shims out raise this point lower this point on stock type cars where you're not allowed adjustable parts like this You've got to heat these points up bend them to get the bump correct and it's a real pain in the butt Sometimes you'll go through different pitman arms trying to get this point higher or lower depending on what you need um, you may change the idler arm. I know there are some idler arms out there that are adjustable or you could raise or lower this point through the idler, but again, those may not be legal. Something like this, um, it's just as important to get the bump correct on as it is, you know, like a, like a regular super late model with a rack. These, uh, these, this is so important because as the toe changes while driving, it affects the way the car turns, the speed at which it turns. Uh, there's just a lot of, uh, you know, little pieces that, that really matter to get correct.